2.0. Oh my god. Oh my. We hit some ice, bro. We hit some ice. Oh my god. Oh my god. Whoa. No, what was that? Ha! Is the spiritual war. This is going to be a complete breakdown of how demons work, how they attack and oppress you, and how to stop them. Before we get started, understand that I already made a 10 minute video yesterday that I tried to upload over 20 times. My TikTok app kept crashing, and then it said I didn't have any storage on my phone. I deleted six or seven gigabytes of storage, and TikTok automatically took that and threw whatever kind of data god knows what on my phone so i literally couldn't even open the draft the spiritual war is real and the demons are infested in the internet keep in mind this never happens unless i talk about the spiritual war and how to fight demons so let's get started this is how demons work they usually start when you're a small child especially if you have great potential and a good heart they will enter your dreams and create night terrors. This is meant to break your spirit and break your bioelectric field open by messing with your mind and your heart. Many people who are spiritually gifted probably recall endless nightmares, seeing a weird creature at the end of your bed, and eventually being really kind of messed up in the head and developing anxiety, OCD, and many autistic symptoms. This was actually a spiritual attack. The reason they focused on you is because you had a very bright light and a good heart and you had the potential to go to war with them once you became an adult and gazed the wisdom on how to fight the spiritual war. This is what happened next. You started to get a strange voice in your head. It wasn't like you were hearing in your ears, but it was like this subtle voice trying to get you to do bad things trying to get you to think intrusive and compulsive thoughts, things that scared you, things that made you feel uncomfortable or guilty. They lead you toward crime, violence, drug abuse, distrust and paranoia. This is all again made to break your spirit. When your mind and your heart feels bad, your bioelectric field weakens. Your bioelectric field is like your immunity, okay? It's like your white blood cells, but for your spirit. It creates an it creates an actual bubble of protection. That's why people are constantly saying, use the violet flame, use the golden egg. This is because subconsciously they're connecting with the wisdom of your auric or bioelectric field. So you imagine that egg shape or that flame because the bioelectric field is electromagnetic energy that is much like a flame, just not one that's in the visible light spectrum. This is the same as Ephesians 6, the armor of God. You're putting on a spiritual protection on the side of your body. When you imagine those thoughts go out as frequencies and they actually affect space time all around you at the quantum level. This actually creates energetic barriers and walls from those energetic parasites and predators. So what will happen if they can't get to you? If you're able to continually reinforce your bioelectric field, control the thoughts in your mind, and overcome your fear so that they can't mess with your emotions or your mind. Well, then they'll use other people that are weaker to attack you. This makes it more difficult because you're not dealing with whatever this unseen thing is, you're dealing in the material real world. And so you're gonna automatically assume that these people are physically doing this of their own decisions, which is really gonna whack out your brain because you're a human animal which wants human connection. And so if a bunch of your human connection, connections at work, family, uh, loved ones, etc., are all terrible. They all kind of flip the script on you and look like they're losing their mind and, and incessantly in attack you and try to make you feel bad. You start to question humanity in general and lose faith in humanity, which again brings down your bioelectric field. They're trying to break it down so they can come and attack you. They have two objectives to either possess you, and if you deny the possession, means you don't do what they tell you to do, you don't engage in evil, they oppress you which means they're constantly trying to attack your bioelectric field. They will enter in at the base of the skull, near the brain stem and where the spine meets the skull, and they will go through your body and create these electrical static signals. This is just the start because when I did the 10 minute video, it wouldn't upload, so I'm gonna at least try to make it smaller and see if that helps because every time I try to- Oh 
Yeah, you see, that's also very interesting. What's the weirdest thing that ever happened to you that made you think that God was real? And I'm not talking. I'm 14 years old, right? I go to town. I go shopping by myself. I think, oh, I'm a big girl now. I'm buying all of these things. And now when it's time to go home, I suddenly realize, oop, I spent my bus fare. I do not have any change. Well, I had like probably just a quarter of what I needed to get onto the bus. So now I try to call somebody. I realize I don't have any credit and there's no, but like there, like there's no way for me to connect, to tell anybody where I am. I don't have data. I don't have minutes, nothing. So now I'm looking around with all these bags. I'm looking around on the floor like a scavenger to try and see, is there any spare coins that somebody's dropped that I can pick up to get on the bus? Nothing. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, let me go to the food court. Because at the food court, there's free Wi-Fi. And if I can connect to the Wi-Fi, I can WhatsApp somebody. Or oh, back in those days, um, BBM, <laughs> Blackberry Messenger, somebody about my situation. So I'm running, I'm running to the, uh, to the food court. I get down, there's nobody in there. So luckily, I had tables. I think there's like two or three people in there. I sit down um, and I'm trying to connect to the Wi-Fi. It is not connecting. My phone keeps dropping the connection. And then even when it does get the connection and I'm trying to message somebody, nothing is going through. And I'm so like just frustrated. Then my phone dies. And now I'm at the verge of tears. Like I am stuck. I am stranded in town. So I decided to sit down. Um, I've already sat down, right? So I decided to put my hands on my table, on the table like this and go like this. And I said, I'm going to pray. I don't have an option right now. Uh, Jesus is my only option. So I said, Lord, I need to get home. Give me bus fare. Amen. That was it. That was my only prayer. And when I looked up like this, there was a woman standing right in front of me. And she said, can I sit with you? And to be honest with you, I was just looking at this woman like, this is not the time. Like all of these tables you see around you, you want to sit with Pardon me, you want to sit with me? Fine. She comes, she sits down next to me. And I'm not making convo, I am distressed. I'm distressed. I'm just looking down, thinking, woe is me, I'm going to die in town. They're going to look for me, they're not going to find me, missing persons report, like all of these things. And she just goes, she starts a conversation, she's like, um, yeah, so I'm in town to get somebody to download WhatsApp on my phone. And I was like, okay. And she was like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to go to the to the phone, one of these phone shops, the Vodafone shop or something, to get them to download WhatsApp. And I was like, what phone do you have? I think she told me like a Samsung or something. And I was like, I can do that for you now. She's like, okay. I downloaded it on. She's like, wow, you're so helpful. Thank you so much. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, you're welcome. Then she said, also, I have something for you. And I was like, what? And then she handed me exactly, and I mean down to the one pence what I needed to get onto the bus. She gave me, like, normal bus fare, right? She didn't give me that. She gave me exactly how much I needed. And I was just like, oh, thank you. And then and then I ran off, right? I ran off onto the other side. And I was like, no, like, this is strange. Let me go and thank her because this woman has just saved my life. I turn around. And this is like two seconds. I've literally just gotten up and taken two steps. I turn around. She's not there she's gone and now I'm looking around because it's pretty open plan right there's all the sh food stores and everything this woman is nowhere I'm looking at the escalators I'm looking at the shops she disappeared into thin air on top of that I'd only taken like two steps right I didn't hear this woman get up she was there and then she wasn't so that's what makes me believe Man, there is a God who listens. I have so many more stories like this, but this is my favorite. Yo, wonderful people. Thanks for watching up to this far, man. A lot of interesting videos has passed. And that's emotional, touching, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on all of those videos. You see, but most of these videos and our aim and our intention is to portray and send good vibes out there to the world and love and caring and peace all those attributes of good humans you see that way we can change the world significantly into a better place the ones that 
even the future generations when they come, they shall have a good time living here. So hit the like button, leave a comment there, and tell us where you're watching from. And if you we don't believe in God actually, and maybe you do are not a Christian and you're watching us, much love to you anyway. There's always a higher power than us, you see, because we are not the ultimate uh, beings on this earth, you see, and there is a higher supreme power than us, even one that you cannot see, even because love is greater and more supreme than us, that's why, that's why we need to send love out there, because love can reach everybody, and when you do good to another person as you are done to yourself, the world would be very nice, you see. Watch till the end. You are loved and respected. Good vibes, man. Ah, huh. mystical and legendary key was found. Well, how does this key open? Some rock or what is this? Oh. This is no very good. If this key opens, some rock door. Does it open that door you have been seeing the, the giants or Ragono? Where is that place again where that guy was seeing some giants peeping through a hole? Oh, maybe this is the key and they lost it along the way in a hurry to get inside. Oh, what do you think this key could be used for? Oh, we should somehow probably go and check it out and try that door. Maybe we can find other people. Yo! Oh my god! You mean this key opens this tunnel that leads? Where does this tunnel even lead? Who made this stuff, man? You see, you know, this is uh, extremely creepy and mind buggering. How? Who came up with these ideas? Alright, guys, check this out. Doing the TikTok uh, thing with the. Just a great, I already did one potato. You boil the whole. You, ba you boil them whole. And then you just. That's it. Look at that. Unbelievable. I've been, I've been cutting and peeling potatoes forever. No more. Already done. Just like that. Five potatoes, ready to go. Put in your fixings. Killer. Can't beat it. Oh, my God. interesting. Oh. When I say the rocks were alive, I meant the rocks were alive. Do you really think this is just coincidence? Do you really think this is just some pareidolia? We're not just seeing faces here. A whole lot more than just faces. A coincidence is going to the market and seeing your friend there at the same time. Pareidolia is seeing faces in clouds. This isn't seeing faces in clouds. Just think of where all that pink Himalayan salt comes from. Now people say that's not how fossilization works or we got carbon dating, but how accurate is it? You know they lie to us about everything. Just look at some of this petrification. Some of these artifacts that have no explanation. Petrification and fossilization takes a lot shorter than they tell us. And in the right scenario, like one big massive cataclysmic event, you have a perfect petri dish for what you see here. Geology, that is nothing more than hardened biology. Question everything, friends, especially the pink Himalayan salt. Until next time, friends. What? No, that is crazy, man. Oh my god. <laughs> Listen to this, this dude right here explains that, your statement, perfectly. No, I don't expect to see buildings tilting away from me because I understand beyond a reasonable doubt that Earth is indeed flat. But hypothetically speaking, if Earth were indeed a globe, I'd imagine we should be able to at least measure how much a building is tilting away from us, wouldn't you say? I mean, even if we couldn't see this supposed tilt with the naked eye, we should be able to measure it by measuring the distance between two buildings from top to bottom, right? And let's say these two buildings are 3,000 kilometers apart. That's 1,800 miles. 
Now be a sport and tell me how many degrees over a distance of 1,800 miles. Then post some evidence showing me that structures do indeed tilt the further you get away from them. Measurements were done of the bases and tops of two buildings, one in Torres, Rio Grande do Sul, and another in Natal, Rio Grande do Norte, 3,050 kilometers apart from each other. According to the theory of the spherical Earth, the distance of the measurements of the bases must be different than the measurements of the top, even in a few meters. But if the measurements are equal, this would show that the Earth has no curvature. Remembering the opinion of the INCRA engineers before the experiment, Probably there will be in relation to the extension of this line, perpendicular to the baseline. I believe it will be longer. Thinking of the Earth as a globe, the initial expectation was that the measurements were different. But when the results arrived, the base and the top measurements were the same, showing that the two buildings are leveled upright. And here the opening angle, where we read the point here, the base of the building and its height. As we do this calculation here, on this plane, we will always find this distance here. On this plane, we will always find this distance here. The identical measurements of the distance between the bases and the tops prove that between the two buildings there is no curvature, proving that the Earth has no spherical shape. Ah, now that tiny is everything I've learned. This is a story that changed me, and I think I witnessed a miracle. I am a medical professional, and I do believe in science and facts and certainty, but this one story did have me questioning everything and made me believe in miracles and possibly supernatural things. I don't know what to think of it. So here is the miracle part of the story. I was doing a late admission years ago um, on hospice where I entered into the home. The patient was arriving from the hospital. It was late. To be very honest, I was a little annoyed, not at the patient, obviously, but just at work that I had to work late and you know i was hoping this would not take very long until i saw the patient and i saw that she was young and she was actively dying which means dying within a few hours to a few days and to me the way she looked i thought that night so i thought she had a few hours left so of course i'm doing everything i can for this patient and then her family which were her children her children were in their mid-20s and I could tell that they had no idea what was happening because they were asking me questions like, when is my mom going to wake up? When can we get her physical therapy? How are we going to feed her? Things like they weren't understanding that she was going to die and she was going to die soon. So how did I know that she was going to die and going to die soon? She was um, had changes in skin color. So she looked cyanotic, which basically means blue. Her lips were blue, her skin coloring was blue, which is not a bad thing, that's a normal thing at the end of life. But what was bad about it is that obviously her family didn't know what was going on. She had changes in breathing. So changes in breathing is like one of the last things I see when someone's about to die. She had terminal secretions, which is that death rattle I always talk about. So gurgling with every breath. She was fully unconscious. To me, she looked so close to death that I kind of wanted to just stay at the house because I thought she was going to die any minute. So once I got her settled and looking, she never looked like she was uncomfortable. She always looked very peaceful. But once I got her settled at home, I took the kids aside and started explaining to them what was really happening, letting them know that their mom was very close to end of life, probably going to die that night. Uh, here is why I think that, explaining everything that I just explained to you about her coloring, her changes in breathing, how she sounded, what she looked like, and asked them if there was anyone else they needed to call or to have come over to help 
support them. So of course they were, they took it, they took the information so graciously and they were calling family to get people over there. And um, I sort of just hung out, you know, kind of waiting for her to die, thinking she was going to be dying definitely that night, probably before I left. And after about an hour or so, she was still alive and I knew I had to be getting home. So I just told the children to, you know, uh, be with her, be with the family. She looks really comfortable. I explained everything, when to call us once she died and that we would come back out and help them with the death certificate and all the different mortuary things. So they thanked me and I left. And of course I went home um, thinking about the family and thinking about her and just, um, you know, I just felt for them. It was very sudden. They were not really prepared. And I was just hoping that she would have a peaceful death. So in the morning, um, I woke up and I looked at my phone to see who went to go do the death visit, because usually the family will call and the nurse will go out and do what we call a death visit. And I didn't see the email. So I thought, oh, well, that's strange. I guess either they forgot to do the email or I don't know what happened. So I called the office and asked them, you know, who went out to go see so-and-so they likely died last night. And they were like, oh, we didn't get any death calls. So I thought, oh, that's weird. So I thought maybe the kids didn't call or I literally never for one millisecond thought she didn't die. <laughs> like the way she looked, and I'd been a nurse for many years by this point, the way she looked, um, I'd never seen someone come back from that. There was no way you could come back from that and like be awake and alert and oriented because your brain was not oxygenating. You can't like live with that. Um, so anyway, I called the family to say, to ask what, what happened and see how they were doing and, you know, just see how the night went. And the son answered and was really happy and was like, Oh, Hey, yeah, the night went great. You know, mom woke up this morning. She said she was hungry. She's in the kitchen eating pancakes. <laughs> and I, my jaw dropped. I didn't want to act completely surprised just because I, I don't know, I'm just trying to be there for the family, right? So I'm thinking, what the hell? I can't, this can't be real. And I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, yeah, mom's awake, said she was hungry. She's in the kitchen eating pancakes. And I hear them like laughing in the kitchen. So I was just like, great. Um, I'm going to come over and see you guys. Cause I was thinking I can't in my head, I'm thinking, I can't believe this. And sure enough, I go over there and this woman is awake, alert, looking very much alive and eating and drinking and walking around. And to me, that is truly a miracle. There is like no medical way this woman could be looking how she looked last night and awake uh, and not only awake, but walking, talking, alert and oriented and eating. And that woman ended up living three more months very well. So walking, talking, eating, not having pain. She did eventually die on hospice from her disease. But to me, there still stands a miracle because there's no way someone can be so close to death and then to come back from that and still be alert and oriented and able to like move and talk and walk and eat. That's my miracle story. I feel like I witnessed a miracle. If you made it this far in the video, there is a twist. But before I tell you what that twist is, I want to know what you think it is. So you tell me in the comments what you think. Okay, so here's the twist to the story. The part that I feel always shy to tell people because it's not something I'm used to or I don't even know if I think it's real, but I can just tell you from my experience and then witnessing this miracle, how I feel like it all ties in together. So that night when I was with this family, I was settling in the patient, the one who was actively dying and her kids were in the other room. I was in her room. I was settling her on the bed. She was unconscious. And I suddenly had a vision of, uh, for lack of better words, like a being behind her bed. And what it felt and looked like was a big angel. Now the angel to me is not like what we would think an angel would look like or what I would typically think an angel would look like with like wings and like small little fairy like glowy angel. It was like this huge solid being is the best way I could describe it. Huge, like as big as a car behind her bed all the way to the ceiling, super, super solid and uh, cream colored. So I can like really picture it even as I'm speaking right now. Uh, the best way I can describe it is like, if you grew up Catholic, there's like a mother Mary statue. That's kind of like stoic and like the heads like um, 
pointing down. And it was like that. It was definitely like a body or a being. And I think it actually did feel like it had wings, but the wings were behind it, um, like not opened. And the being or the angel in that moment felt like it was just there for her. Like the being knew I was there, but it didn't care. And it didn't actually feel super soft and loving. It felt powerful. Like this all was happening within milliseconds, just so you know. And the only way I could describe it is in hindsight. When it was happening in the moment, I brushed it off because I didn't know what, what was going on. And it only was until the next day when I saw her up and awake and I was like, holy, crap, I feel like I just witnessed a miracle. Did my brain go back to that night where I felt this being in the room? And it was a big, solid, powerful being that felt like it was there specifically for her and it knew her very well. That's what it felt like. It felt like it was hers. This was her angel or her thing that was there to protect her and, and help her. Again, it's so crazy for me to even talk about this because it hasn't happened before and it hasn't happened since. But it was the one time I feel like I witnessed a miracle and it was the one time that that night before I left, I knew I had seen something in my mind's eye and I had felt something, but I quickly brushed it off, of course, because I'm a medical professional who believes in science and facts and I don't really, uh, I've never witnessed angelic things, right? But then after I came back that next morning and she was alert, oriented, awake and lived for another three months and was eating pancakes and laughing with her kids, I thought, I think I know why. To me, that night in her room, it was like she had her own personal angel that was either healing her or protecting her or, you know, giving her more time. I don't, I don't, I don't know what the purpose of the angel was, but I know that the next day she was no longer actively dying and she lived for another three months. And again, the angel. Wow, that's an incredible story. Well, I learned something new today. Did you realize that when you are using your cell phone and you are typing, when you push the space bar down and just hold it for a little bit, it actually turns into a mouse. And then you can move your mouse all over the text. So you don't have to try to like tap where you want your cursor to go. It's so cool. <laughs> I've been using a cell phone for how long? And I didn't know that. That is so cool. Learn something new every day. Hope you're having a great Saturday. Bye. My dad figured out that if he acts dumb, then my mom will do everything for him. So he became a master of that. He'd do it for other people, but not for my mom. And growing up, I hated my dad for it. I thought my mom was the victim. Later on, as I got older and I started really observing, I'm like, oh my God, he helps everyone out. He's, he's not incompetent with anyone else, only with her. Why? Because I saw my mom belittling him. I saw my mom criticizing him. I saw my mom correcting the work he had put in. So of course he's going to do that. I don't blame him one bit. I don't blame my dad at all. She would, first of all, criticize my dad for doing stuff. And then she would um, jump in and do it herself. So my dad figured this out that, hey, I'm going to get criticized anyways, and she's going to jump in and do it. So I might as well act dumb. Remember that video I made where you should be acting dumb? <laughs> Yo, good people. A lot of videos I have passed. Good voice video, interesting video. And some that have really touched my heart. You see, like now there's a certain video that has passed. The woman narrating a story of a uh, family of that family which had a sick person and the miracle that happened and it's just amazing man, because people go a lot of stuff in this life even from this side of the world there are a lot of challenges you see and people go through a lot for here in this life people suffer and they see and encounter extreme situations that only god helps them to deal with them you see now yourself if you're watching this video and maybe you have been through such a situation, hard times, or things haven't been going the way you want. 
Don't worry there, my friend. Much love to you. The universe will reward you soon. Please keep on sharing love and good vibes and caring for one another just as you care for yourself. That way, you see incredible stuff coming your way. And in anything that is dazzling your mind, making you lack peace or not be cool, may you have peace, you see, and may love find its way towards you and hear all your woes, you see. Big up to everybody that has left a comment, hit the right button. You are all loved and respected. Big up to um, Jay Stiston, by the way. You see, that uh, person is a good person and they leave a comment there almost every day. Actually, it's every day they hit the like button and they just pray the universe to reward them. You see, they had left a comment there that life, our life has been hard and things haven't been easy on their side. So, all will be well, MJ. We hope and pray that the universe will reward you. And all the good stuff are coming your way. Same to everybody watching. Hit the like button and watch till the end kindly. Much love and respect. This phrase will instantly shut down passive aggressive people at work and in life. I started using this with passive aggressive people last year and there has not been even one case where I have used it where the person hasn't backed off with their toxic little tail between their legs. The best part is it's so simple. In your most neutral tone, you're gonna ask, are you trying to be helpful or hurtful? Ah. That's so sick it can work. Here's a secret that most witches don't tell you. And it's not usually on purpose. It's just because they do it so naturally or it's become such a part of their practice that they forget it is the missing ingredient. And I'm going to teach you about all of this. Go find my YouTube channel. You can find the link in my profile or search on YouTube. It's just my first name and I'll give you tons of information for free. And if you do these things, it's going to improve and change the actual energy of magnetism in your life. Here's the first thing to think about. Your thoughts and beliefs about yourself cannot be overcome with spells. I call this how to create an enchantable life. It's making your own energy aligned. It's clearing out the old structures and beliefs that says you should be this small, you should fit into this box, and that deems success. That energy is not magnetic. And here's what happens when you start addressing the thoughts and beliefs that you have about what's possible, about who you are, about the core and center of your power. Once you start addressing them, even just in the mind space, and you start letting that percolate into your body, then your entire energy field will change. Now here's the additional piece that's so important. When you combine that work, your energetic work that makes you more magnetic and then you cast your spells or rituals from that place then you become unstoppable subscribe to my youtube channel and i'll give you all the details on how to do that oh, huh. oh my god this south korean woman gets hundreds of millions of views just for the way she eats so much food but here's the catch. Many people think she's just faking it. Sometimes her food just disappears. Or look at this moment when people caught an editing trick where she looked like she was spitting the food. Because see, unlike many mukbangers, she can fit huge portions of food in her mouth and make ASMR chewing noises while still looking pretty prim and proper. It's unbelievable, but she almost eats the same amount of food as Nikocado Avocado. And yet, unlike him, she never gets fat. Ew, that's not good. This is Moon Bok Hee, also known as Eat with Boki, and she has over 9 million subscribers on YouTube for her incredible mukbang skills. But like we said, is this woman just deceiving her fans? You can tell her video and the sound does not actually match. 
because you'll notice that when she started, her portions were still normal. A regular sized person like her can realistically finish. But of course, as extreme mukbang became the new trend, the pressure to keep up likely pushed her to do more, more and more. Suddenly she was gulping and swallowing this. This. And of course, this. Getting hundreds of millions of views for it. As she became more popular, people started spotting what they suspected was proof of her lying. Like when fans caught what they call secret signals for her editor, telling them where to cut or trim her video. When they caught her pretending to drink by making huge gulping sounds like this. When she was spotted almost spitting her food during this blurred jump cut in her video. Or when the food suddenly gets repositioned or even disappears, again supposedly because of editing tricks. And of course, there's more that will surprise you even more. But before I tell you that, guys, I need one tiny favor. Many of you are watching Project Nightfall almost every single day and yet you are not following our page. Please help us hit 20 million followers here on Project Nightfall on Facebook. I will greatly appreciate it. Thank you. One YouTuber exposing her even showed how easy it was to recreate the alleged mukbang fakery. The YouTubers who show you the whole swallowing moment throws up right after the shooting is over. And another guy pointed out that her own editor might have even exposed her in her own video. The subtitle shows in Korean saying it's Kojimai, which means it's a lie. Hmm. Boki is lying about her entire physical self by saying, Hey, look at me, I can eat this much and still be thin and cute. Bulimia is a very serious and personal issue. I don't think people should be accusing someone of it. Why does she get hate for doing something she loves with modifications? To be clear, even with all these alleged editing tricks or very specific observations that supposedly serve as proof, nobody still knows for sure what is the truth. For all we know, they could just be coincidences, normal editing errors or forgivable small acts for this mukbanger to get to do their job well. People are literally focusing on the 1% that looks suspicious, completely ignoring the 99% they've seen all these years. If Boki is indeed lying, she deserves the backlash. But she also might have some serious eating disorder problem. So maybe that's the real lesson here, night fam. That if we really cared about the health of the people in these mukbangs rather than our own petty entertainment, we wouldn't just tell them to stop editing their videos. Instead, we would collectively call for the unhealthy, glutinous, food wasting, dangerous world of mukbang to just stop altogether. Men still don't understand that women are four different people every month. And it's not even our fault. If you want to enjoy your life a whole lot more, learn this. Because it will change your whole dang life. Women have four different personalities because there are four weeks in a month and four different hormonal changes. One is the follicule, follicule, I don't know how to freaking say it. She just got off her period. She's more independent, outgoing. This is where I get an entire month's work done in seven days. I'm really positive and I'm having the best day ever. Week two is ovulation. This is when we are most likely to get pregnant. Also when our body really wants to get pregnant. I also like to be alone more. Maybe that's just me. Week three, we become a witch of a person. You will do nothing wrong, but I freaking hate you. If you couldn't tell, that is exactly the hormone. Hormonal week I'm in right now. I want to 
punch someone in the face for literally no reason. Finally, week four, you're bleeding, and all you want is cuddles and flowers and chocolates, and you better do it. So the next time you call your girlfriend crazy, don't you freaking dare. Because it's not her fault that her body is four different people. Now you know how to track the freaking cycles. You're welcome. Love you. <laughs> Take the battery out of your phone. I can still listen to you. In the old days when you took the batteries out, you take the batteries out and think you're good and you go in there and skiff and you can talk about whatever you want. Oh, I could still listen to you. Damn. We were doing stuff that you could never find what we were doing. Ever. And you never will. And it's in every piece of equipment right now. In every chip. Right now, there's there's stuff. And where are we buying all the chips from? China. Now that's scary, man, to think of it better. I know this is a clear illustration of the environment in different ways, in movies and uh, logos. Someone explain this. Okay, so we got some sun rays hitting the clouds there. Okay, this is a sunset. What do we got? What am I explaining? Okay, now we're going back to the sun rays hitting the clouds. Is that what's supposed to be confusing? Ah, super glue versus baking soda. Ha ha ha. Oh, some guy has decided to showcase his creativity by showing us incredible stuff that we can use to mend our broken stuff at home using super glue and what? And some baking soda, which is now very interesting. Oh, I didn't know you can do this. Oh. This is lovely and incredible. You see, some guys are just lovely, amazing, and full of good vibes. Because for a person to share information out the information like this, freely, without asking for a pay, and just good vibes. You see, they're sharing this information to help other viewers, which is very, very good, man. You see, you should help others without caring uh, how they look, their color, or where they come from. Just be helpful and loving and a good vibes person because now this is very interesting. You see myself for some of the things I see here and I'm surprised and I've come across very educative stuff along the way. And some things I've learned here I think no one could have ever taught me because it's just incredible. Huh. You see humans in different parts of the world think differently and amazing and interestingly. And you just love what uh, they do and uh, the ideas that people come up with, you see? Like, no, how? Oh, you see, uh, myself, I couldn't have ever, 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 never in my life thought of using such an idea to mend a hole in a plastic stuff. Ah, oh, my God. You see, but now thanks to this kind of human, I have no at least uh, come up with some idea, rough idea that I could use somewhere. Hmm. I might well know sometimes the, these tools that are used here by these amazing people. Some of them are scarce and hard to find. But now like with this baking soda and super good, this is stuff that you can easily get. Yeah. You see guys, share with us what you have been thinking about these videos, you see. You know to drink us to change or to add, you see. Or even something that you would just like to comment on or even say some good work, whatever. Just to say something of what you think about this channel and these videos and everything here. And you see, that way it shall be so nice. And send this message of love out there. You see, this is incredible. Incredible for real. Ah, man. How? Oh. Please, guys. This is now amazing.